The news day continues here on One News Now. I'm Colleen Verzosa. The Supreme Court has released a temporary restraining order, or TRO, against the transferring of unused PhilHealth funds to the National Treasury. This is in response to three petitions filed before the SC to question the legality of the fund transfer. Before the release of the TRO, PhilHealth has already returned 60 billion pesos of its untapped funds to the executive branch. The SC said the TRO is effective immediately to halt the planned return of the remaining funds next month. So the TRO is just really to prevent the further transfer of more funds from PhilHealth to the National Treasury. Meanwhile, some lawmakers believe that former President Rodrigo Duterte may be held liable for his bombshell revelations. This even after he made some clarifications in a press conference. Julie Baiza has that report. I would have voiced a lie in public. At saka kung nandoon yung pangalan niya, si, isasabi ko talaga, yung, yung pangalan mo nandyan. If I name one, I name all. Binasa ko eh. So wala nakaiskapo doon. Bakit ako mag... Wala, wala, wala. In fairness to the President. Wala. This was how former President Rodrigo Duterte reacted yesterday to questions as to whether or not President Bongbong Marcos was in the narco list concocted during his administration's war on drugs. Recall that in January, during his Maisug prayer rally in Davao, Duterte claimed that Marcos was in his narco list. Tinakitaan ako ng evidence ng PDEA doon sa listahan Nandoon yung pangalan mo. Si Bongbong Marcos, bangag noon. Ngayong presidente na, bangag natin ang presidente. In response, Marcos had said Duterte must have been under the effect of fentanyl. Fentanyl is a powerful opioid which the former president had admitted to using for pain relief. In the face of thousands who have died, Duterte maintains that he will continue his relentless war on drugs in Davao City if he wins the mayoral seat next year. Pang President, bababa ako ng mayor. Day one, na. Either you swim or you run. I do not give a sh**. Get out of Davao or you die. At yesterday's Senate hearing, Duterte was his usual brash self, at one point outright mocking authorities. Of the presiding senators, it was only Senator Riz Ontiveros who challenged Duterte head-on. Matagal ako pumapatay ng tao hanggang ngayon, hindi pa sila nakapahal ng kaso. So mas okay Walang pong trabaho. patayin sila kesa so, ipreso sila. Wala akong pakialam dyan sa criminal, ma'am. So thank you for Akong making that of record. Akong pakialam sa criminal kung saan silang impernong gusto nilang pumunta. Well, Mr. Chair, wala namang jurisdiction ng Senado sa impyerno. Dito lang sa bansa natin pwede tayong mag-investigate. But doon tayo pupunta. Well, uh, wala po akong ambisyon pumunta ang impyerno pa. Ontiveros also called Duterte out for spewing profanities and cursing all throughout the hearing. Hindi ako sensitive. Ayaw ko lang talaga ng bastos. Ayaw ko ng walang hiya. Lalo na pag pinag-uusapan natin kaya, ng seryosong ako, bagay ng war on drugs sa ka-extrajudicial killing. Kaya ako, killings. ako bastos so, man, ka, wala ang hiya Chair. talaga ako. Yan ang totoo. Siguro, hindi ako dadating itong pagka-presidente kung hindi ako bastos at hindi ako, hindi ako walang hiya. Later on, she called on the Department of Justice and the International Criminal Court to look into what she calls Duterte's admission under oath. Senate President Chiz Escudero also believes Duterte can be held accountable for all he had said at the hearing. Ang pagkakaiba lang, nung sinasabi niya no, nung presidente man siya o pagkatapos siya maging presidente o bago siya naging presidente nung siya mayor, ito ay sinabi sa isang talumpati sa isang interview. Ang pinakaiba kahapon, lahat ng binitiwan niyang salita kahapon ay under oath, pinanumpaan. At uh, sinabi niyang yan ay totoo sa abot ng kanyang uh, nalalaman na pwedeng magamit kung sakasakali pabor o laban sa kanya. Madalas sinasabi ng ilang mga nakapalibot kay Pangulong Duterte, uh, dating Pangulong Duterte, na biro lang yon, mm -hmm. nag-joke lang yon. 
hindi marahil pwedeng sabihin biro pa kung ano man ang pinanumpa ang sinabi niya. Senate Blue Ribbon Committee Chairman Coco Pimentel has also recommended that lawyers study all the statements brought up by the former president during the hearing. But one Duterte ally who's spoken up for him is former spokesman, Attorney Harry Roque, who's in hiding from an arrest order by the House of Representatives. Ibang polisiya doon sa pag-amin. Dahil ang pag-amin, ang confession ay personal no? at hiwala yan sa policy. Ang sinasabi lang niya, gawin niyo ang katungkulan ninyo. Kapag kayo gumagawa ng katungkulan ninyo, sangayon sa pata, suportado ko kayo. All senators weighed in on the outcome of their hearing on the previous administration's drug war. Senator Bato de la Rosa told The Big Story that he was pleased with what transpired. He said it was good that we finally heard the side of former President Rodrigo Duterte. It's going to be fine. No? Uh, at least, uh, nakapagsalita yung ating uh, dating Pangulong uh, uh, Rodrigo Duterte. At nakuha natin ang side niya patungkol sa war on drugs. Meanwhile, Senator Coco Pimentel, who led the hearing, refuted claims that Duterte dominated it. Pimentel told StoryCon that one side was happy to have aired their side, while the other one believes they got some evidence. Kung ganyan yung feedback natin, ibig sabihin nun eh, nagampanan natin yung papel natin na maging fair, fair na chairman. Gitna lang tayo, gitna lang ako, wala akong, wala akong agenda rito. And now for the latest on the weather, Typhoon Leon further intensifies over the Philippine Sea. It was last spotted some 395 kilometers east of Calayan, Cagayan. Leon packs winds of up to 165 kilometers per hour and gustiness of up to 205 kph. The typhoon will be closest to Batanes from tomorrow early morning to noontime. But a landfall over the area is also not being ruled out. It will likely be or, or at near super typhoon intensity during this time. Tropical cyclone wind signal number three is currently in effect over Batanes and the eastern portion of Babuyan Islands. Signal number two, meanwhile, is hoisted over the rest of Babuyan Islands, Cagayan, northern and eastern portions of Isabela, as well as in Apayao, Kalinga, northern and eastern portions of Abra, eastern portion of Mountain Province, and Ilocos Norte. Nearly 20 other areas which are now being flashed on your screens are now under signal number one. Meanwhile, former presidential spokesperson Harry Roque denied any involvement in the alleged human trafficking committed by the illegal pogo company Lucky South 99. Roque insisted the qualified human trafficking charges filed against him by the Philippine Anti-Organized Crime Commission, or PAO, and the Philippine National Police, or PNP, are fabricated. He said the government is doing this because he is an ally of former President Rodrigo Duterte. And the lawyer added that PAO and the PNP have no sufficient evidence linking him to human trafficking. Na walang kahit sino nagre-reklamo, na re-recruit ko sila, na pinilit ko silang magtrabaho. Wala akong ganyang testigo. Ang kadalang kaso ay meron daw sa buwatan, sa paniko at ng mga tao na sa likod ng Lucky South 99. Ano yung mga ebidensya? Comelec is planning to lower the shading threshold to 15% in the upcoming 2025 polls. Comelec Chairman George Garcia explained that the lower threshold will count more votes in the election. He said this move is more friendly towards senior citizens, persons with disabilities, and other people who are struggling to shade the whole circle in the ballots. The Comelec will recommend this move to its unbank. <laughs> mga protesta, o, di sa 15%. At least doon, kahit yung nakatatanda, may kapansanan, yung medyo uh, nahihirapan, siguro naman kahit na tuldok lang na ganyan, point lang na ganyan, mabibilang na ngayon. Kasi that's the intention of the voter. MQuest Holdings and Viva Communications enter into a landmark joint agreement to produce high-quality entertainment content. At para bigyan ang mukhang balita, mobile journal, Denise Valdesancho. Viva Communications together with MediaQuest Holdings have joined forces in a joint venture agreement to further bring more of its audience's entertainment needs. Following the partnership, 
of Viva with MediaQuest through the launch of Sari Sari Network way back 2015. Viewers are expected to enjoy several new entertainment shows beginning 2025 as Viva Communications and MQuest Ventures announce its stronger collaboration. Both boss Vic Del Rosario Jr. and Viva President and COO Vincent Del Rosario III were present in the signing. Alongside MQuest's group CFO John Andal, President and CEO Jane Basas, and First Vice President and Head of Special projects Shen Olaso. We feel uh, very excited uh, because we've been doing uh, several partnerships in the past and uh, this is the latest one. This also signifies a showcase of talent between Viva and MQuest artists. Over the years, Viva, through Signal TV Sari Sari Channel, have demonstrated the talents of artists with the likes of Julia Barreto, Yasi Pressman, Marco Gomabao, and Christine Reyes. But that doesn't stop there. Well, basically all the big movies that uh, was released by Viva will be seen on TV5. Well, expect the big artists from Viva to be uh, seen eventually in, on TV5. Aside from these, what should the viewers anticipate? Well, uh, we have several uh, lineup, uh, some uh, daily show and then some weekly show, several films that will be shown. A lot of the Viva titles will be shown uh, on TV5, so watch for it. By next year, these TV programs can be enjoyed in the Philippines and abroad across MediaQuest's pay TV, OTT, and DTT platforms. Other entertainment content will be distributed in various time slots through TV5. This one is much bigger in terms of uh, we have more air time to, uh, to produce with uh, TV5, so it will uh, be a bigger tie-up. For now, viewers may enjoy a re-energized afternoon block with face-to-face -to, -face to Harapan and Lumuhod Kasalupa, ang bagong yugto. Watch out for ano, upcoming shows coming from TV5 and Viva. With this new venture, Viva and MQuest aim to strengthen their joint dedication in producing top entertainment content that will resonate with the Filipino heart. Mobile journalist Denise Valdesancho. We are One News. And those are the top stories of the hour. I'm Pauline Verzosa. We are One News.